Happy Europe Day. We're marking the occasion by speaking to a familiar face about why the 70th anniversary of the Schuman Declaration is so important given what's happening in the EU and around the world with the COVID-19 pandemic. My name is Kevin Purcell and I'm joined here now on Facebook Live by EPP Group Chairman Manfred Weber. We'd love to hear from you, so if you have any questions, please feel free to write them in the comments section and we will put them to the Chairman. Manfred, good morning. Good morning, Kevin. Good to see you and uh, hello to everyone who is listening to us. Happy Europe Day to you. Obviously, this year it's a, it's a little bit different. Are you doing anything yourself to mark the occasion? Well, with the limits of the Corona uh, uh, regulation, uh, we are celebrating, absolutely, because it's a great day. Uh, you, you know, it's, for me, it's simply the day where, where I can be really proud to be an European, where I feel to be an European with two, with two aspects. First of all, on the, the past, what we achieved in today's European Union. So don't take it for granted that we are living now for more than 70 years in peace in Europe, that we have found a way to live together. And more importantly, that uh, the European Day reminds us about our European way of life. So what makes us to be an European? And if you, if you, if you, if you consider things like the social market economies that we have even in in poorer countries like Romania, we have a, we have a healthcare system. Uh, uh, look to America, they are still discussing Obamacare. So that's why we have achieved so much about rule of law, about democracy as a fundamental principle for us. We have a ban of death penalty all over Europe, a fundamental principle for us. And probably above all, there is freedom. That's a basic headline for to being an European, freedom of press, of of, uh, of, of religion and so on. So that is what makes us to be Europeans. Huh? And that is what we are celebrating today. And we can be very, very grateful for those who, who achieved this, who did the first steps. And that was uh, Schumann and others uh, after the Second World War. And that really set the foundation stone 70 years ago. What Schumann said on this day 70 years ago, and that led us to the EU we know today. Absolutely. And and I tell you, I, 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 read, I read again the, 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 uh, the text uh, of the Schumann Declaration, and I really can only ask you, please, please also have a look on it, because it's a fascinating document. And, and you see that a few years after the Second World War, where, where, only, where only one major feeling among the nations in Europe was present on our continent, and this feeling was to hate each other, because we killed each other. So we destroyed Europe, we destroyed each other. And a few years after this terrible event, um, a, a French politician said publicly, we have to change everything. And the, the past was about independent, sovereign nations who, 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 who built, built up uh, uh, alliances among themselves. Huh? Uh, and Schumann said, let's stop this. Let's share our sovereignty. Let's go to a higher level on European level, to share our sovereignty. That the nations give up on their decision-making power and give it to a higher body. And the principle behind it is that we are equal, that everybody has the same right to contribute, to say, to intervene, and to block if necessary, if, uh, if he wants to do so. So to respect each other. So this was such a historic event, such a historic decision. And not only that Schumann had the idea, that he was really capable to deliver, to implement the idea afterwards with coal and steel in, uh, uh, union. That was, that was such a great historic decision for our continent. And today's Corona time again reminds us that still today we have a lot of things to, to consider. What do we need on European responsibility that for our daily life, uh, uh, the conditions are better. What would Schumann make of Europe 2020? Would he be proud? He would be absolutely proud. I think the politicians after the Second World War could, couldn't have imagined to, 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 live, to establish a Europe like we have it today. We achieved so much. Uh, the Corona crisis today reminds us, uh, don't take these achievements for granted. So we have to protect them. Look to the Schengen situation that we have now again, uh, uh, an isolated national approach on fight against Corona and uh, a lot of uh, border controls and even blocked uh, 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 borders. That's why don't risk the achievements. Let's come back to Schengen. Let's come, let's come back to the fundamental rights we have as Europeans. Uh, and uh, that is one aspect that Schumann would have in mind. And 
and uh, having this forward-looking, ambitious uh, thinking of, 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 of Schumann uh, in mind, I think he would tell us, look to the global level. Huh? Uh, the corona crisis is also an, an event where probably the power, first of all, the economic, but also the political power on the global level will be redistributed. Huh? If China is the first uh, big, uh, big continent, big uh, nation, who will come economically out of the crisis, strongly out of the crisis, and would probably be the first nation who will have a medicine uh, against, uh, they are doing a lot in this, then, uh, then they are in a way the winner of the development and, and, and they have another social model, they have another democratic state model. Uh, uh, so the competition is going on. And Schumann would say, let's be proud about what we achieved as Europeans. I spoke about the, the fundamental values of our continent. Uh, and uh, don't be naive. In today's world, we have still, we need still unity to defend this. And that's why a common approach as Europeans in foreign affairs and defense issues would be for sure one aspect where Schumann would remind us today, let's go forward, let's unite Europe again. And another founding father, Jean Monnet, he spoke about a change, change coming out of a crisis. We're in a new crisis now. Um, you've spoken about the, the pandemic. What do you think needs to change in Europe coming out of this crisis? I mean, first of all, sometimes I'm a little bit, um, uh, I'm sad because, uh, because sometimes, we, not, not only sometimes, very often, we need a crisis to understand what is needed on European level. I would wish to see that Europe is clever in us to prepare Self before we have a crisis. So that's, that's why uh, Monet is right, but I would really love to see that Europe is clever enough to do it before. But okay, we are now in a crisis, obviously, and there are two aspects. One is the health aspect, and there, for the moment, we are, we are stable, we are, we, are, we, are, we are improving a little bit. Um, and, uh, and, and so on national level, on regional level, uh, on European level, generally speaking, the last week's uh, uh, we stabilize the situation with all, with all the tragedy behind, with all the people who died behind. Um, but uh, for the moment, we stabilize the situation. And the lesson we have to learn out of this is that uh, uh, the, the subject, the problem, the challenge is European wide the same. So in Ireland, in Italy, in Greece, in Germany, the coronavirus is everywhere the same and we face the same problem. So let's find a more united answer on this uh, for the future. So more let me say, coordinated approach on health issues on European level would be needed. Currently, legally speaking, the European Union has no right to do anything in health issues, and that is not, not good. Uh, uh, and, and the second aspect is, uh, is coming up now more and more, and that is about the economic impact. Um, we all see the figures. Um, the Commission this week presented the figures about 7.5 uh, percent uh, loss of GDP, so a lot of strong impacts, stronger than 12 years ago in the economic euro crisis. So, and having this in mind, this stronger countries like Finland, Netherlands, Germany, Austria can probably manage the situation, but the weaker countries cannot do so. That's why, let's come back to Schumann, he said uh, Europe can only live with solidarity and that is needed today again. That's why we in the EPP group are strongly fighting for uh, recovery fund. So under the proposal of the Commission, Ursula von der Leyen and also what Council decided, it goes in a good direction. As a detail, we insist in a democratic legitimacy of this fund. So the Parliament must decide about who gets finally the money, where do we spend. But uh, generally speaking, solidarity is needed with those who suffered most, Italy, Spain and others. Uh, and that is uh, what we have to learn out of the crisis. And I know in a statement you released today, you spoke in particular about young people and you mentioned the economic crisis that they've been through. This is the second crisis in their lifetimes. What do you say to, to young people in Germany, in my own country, in Ireland, who are worried about their future now, worried about job prospects and the economic hit that this will have? That is my, personally, my main argument. I was using it in all the discussions in the, in the last weeks. Um, that uh, uh, 12 years ago, 10 years ago, in the economic crisis, we faced already a kind of a lost generation. I met a lot of them last year in the election campaign, bilaterally when I spoke with them, and they told me, uh, we, we are well educated, we have a lot of knowledge, we, we, we studied and we did our job. 
And now we have no perspective. Uh, uh, I have no job. I cannot, I cannot deliver in the interest of the European economy to be creative for the future and so on. So that is the lost generation we speak about. Uh, they managed in the last 10 years to, in a way, survive and to find their way in, in today's societies. Uh, but uh, I tell everyone, Europe cannot accept another lost generation now, 10 years after the, this big economic crisis. That is a very moral and a very important argument we have to use. And you know, I'm a German politician. I'm, I'm coming from Germany, from Bavaria, and uh, Germany is one of the strong countries in Europe. And, and I tell the Germans, please, please have this in mind. Germany, Netherlands, again, Finland, they cannot have a good future uh, without the European, European solidarity, that Europe works together, that Europe is a unity which works finally. We are only strong if we are united. And that is what, 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 what we have to insist in. So this human aspect on solidarity is more needed than ever before. And uh, the proof will come in the, next, uh, in the next weeks. We will have a lot of difficult decisions ahead of us. And uh, we have to argue. And I want to motivate really everyone who is listening to us uh, to contribute, to be engaged. The politics is not only about politicians who, who make statements. It's about being active. And, and Europe needs a lot of people who are active, who are fighting for unity, for, for the idea. And, uh, and I really want to invite everyone uh, to contribute. It's now, again, a kind of a Schumann moment we are living in, where we have to build up a stronger and even more united European Union. And on the issue of solidarity, how important is it that countries stand together when it comes to the cost of the economic recovery and, and maybe it being shared amongst member states that is then the the practical outcome you know money is first of all money it's more more a technical thing in a way but it shows the the the, the value background what you what you really believe in and uh, if we if we are really capable to build up now really a strong powerful recovery fund on european level where the member states are contributing and the european level can spend the money then uh, we really show that solidarity is not only a word, that we really do it in practice. And, and uh, let me say that for these aspects of a, of, a, of a concrete recovery fund, I insist that this money must then go to the future of Europe. When we speak about the young generation, we should not spend the money for the old problems, for the old, um, uh, probably all the mistakes uh, some politicians did uh, in the past. We should really finance the future. For example, to invest in a in a European-wide 5G network. Uh, imagine that we bring really digitalization strongly alive that would create a, a, an enormous market if we, had, if we would have had such an uh, infrastructure in Europe. So that's why let's invest in the future uh, with this money. That would be the best what we can do out of the crisis. We need economic uh, uh, recovery, so economic strength again after the, after the uh, development in the last month. Uh, but again, with future investments and, you know, digitalization and climate change are the two main pillars for us in this legislative period where we want to invest, where we want to show as Europeans, also for the global partners, for China, for America, imagine about Trump and all these things, uh, we have to show the world that it works, it can work, we can have a good economic future if we change things towards a CO2-friendly economy and towards a, a digital economy. So you think there are opportunities that uh, can be achieved uh, through this crisis as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's in our hands. It's always in our hands. Like Schumann uh, showed us, it's in our hands. History is not an automatic process. It's, it's up to us. And that's why, again, I want to motivate people to participate, to, to, to show up and to, to engage. Uh, that is the only way to, to, have, a good, to have a good future and, um, and uh, always this engagement, this future orientation, always on the base of our fundamental principles. And we have to defend them internally in the European Union, and we have to show to the global level that our fundamental principles, I call them the European way of life, how we, how we think that a society should be organized, should, should, should work together, uh, such, that, that such uh, uh, principles we identified in Europe today uh, are also a global model. So we want to show the world that this is a good example. We show a good example. And on the issue of engagement, we do have a question on Facebook. Someone wants to know, why can't Europe not take a step further and be more united like the United States? Yeah, that, that's the idea. And uh, 
And you know, we are not we are not going through a civil war like the Americans did uh, to establish their their nation on 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 a on a, on a, on a higher level. We do this um, through through uh, argumentation, through discussion, through a democratic process, and for strengthening the European Union. We will face this now in the recovery fund aspect to strengthen the European Union. That means unanimous vote on the member states level. So the member states must voluntarily be ready to share uh, sovereignty. Uh, and that again, only to underline this again, that is the Schumann uh, uh, heritage that he said, let's share sovereignty. And this must always be case by case. We as EPP, for example, we, we are not, we are not, we are not, uh, we are not against, let me say, uh, sharing responsibilities. So there are still a lot of things which should be dealt on national level and even on regional level. So not everything which has to be decided in, in Europe is an issue for Europe. Eh? We also have uh, strong nations. We also face uh, regions who are responsible for their future. But uh, in issues, uh, on issues where we, where we really have the need of coordination, like in the healthcare, like we faced it in Corona, then let's do it on European level. So case by case decision making process. And I know that those who are who believe in Europe are sometimes a little bit um, frustrated that it takes so much time to strengthen Europe. Yes, but again, that's the way. That's the Schumann way that made us strong. That finally, when after we decided to give issues to the European level, everybody accepted it because it was a long discussion going on. Will Europe be more united after this pandemic? Do you think? Well, um, I tell you that um, with today's Schengen situation, and for example, this week we also had the judgment of the Bundesverfassungsgericht in Germany towards the Euro, towards the ECB. I tell you that my feeling is that uh, uh, the achievements and the things we believe in are not anymore uh, uh, built up on such a stable ground like it was in the past. I think that Today's political leaders and also judges, frankly speaking, are, 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 are to, are to take it as to granted. They, they, they don't respect anymore that we have to invest and we have to do something for this. And that's why I'm, I'm worried. Yes, I'm worried about what is happening. On the other hand, everyone, all politicians, all decision makers will finally face the challenge that they cannot do it alone. The problems cannot be solved anymore alone. Imagine about Corona and about medicine against Corona. So we have today in Europe two, two um, research groups, uh, groups of researchers who are, who are, who are already testing medicine uh, 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 toward the human beings. So, and, uh, and, and, and this is a, a research team in Germany and one in Great Britain. So if, we, if you don't believe in Europe, then it can happen that Italy and Spain and others don't get any medicine because we are not united anymore. So that's why the single market, that a medicine who is produced in Germany must have the full access and the free access to all, let me say, countries in Europe, is a big advantage, is a big asset. And that's why in today's world, where a nation like also the middle term and smaller countries we are having in the European Union, have no capacity alone to, to innovate the medicine against Corona. So that's why the practical need to work together is so strong. Uh, and that's why I, I think on the other hand, on the one hand, I'm a little bit um, worried, but on the other hand, I think the, the need and, uh, and the practical pressure towards the decision makers is so strong that finally we will recognize that it works only if we stay together, if we follow the Schumann approach. A lot of lessons have been learned during this crisis, in particular the handling at the start uh, in Europe, which seems to have improved since then. Um, a lot of lessons will be learned about, about the handling um, fr from the get-go, really. Sorry, I didn't get the last point. Uh, just on the lessons being learned. Um, in particular, some countries were critical, perhaps, of the EU's response at the beginning of this crisis, although uh, the, the general feeling is it, it has improved since then. Absolutely. And together we showed, I underlined this again, from regional towards the European level, 
that we can uh, can um, can control the coronavirus for the moment. We have it under control. We have uh, different situation in the countries, but generally speaking, it is uh, it is being improved. But uh, on the lesson on the lesson we learned is uh, let's try to do it together. I give you one concrete example. Already in February, my group, the EPP group, uh, made the proposal to have an European wide, an European wide, on the whole Schengen area, a ban on flights to, towards China. Uh, uh, in February, only Italy did so. So you couldn't fly from Beijing to Rome, but it was still allowed to go to Frankfurt, to Paris, to Vienna. And, uh, and that shows, I think, absolutely to everyone that it is ridiculous. So we are living in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a united Europe, and that's why a ban on with health reasons behind, with the corona, with the pandemic reason as an argument behind, to ban flights to Beijing and to China generally makes only sense if we do it on European level. That's why, that is a very practical argument to show you that uh, these, these are the things we have to learn out of the crisis. We have some questions that were sent in to us um, yesterday ahead of this interview, so we'll get to them now. Um, the first one, we, we, we talked about a lot of history um, this morning, but someone wants to know, uh, what is your vision for Europe 2030? Ten years from now, what will Europe look like? A Europe that is leading on global level, a united Europe which is leading on European level, and it is about values. Uh, spoke about this. And therefore, it's needed to invest in the next years, first of all, in the foreign affairs and also in the defense issue uh, for the future. That is an issue where Schumann um, didn't manage to bring Europe together. Um, so that was not possible after the Second World War. The idea was to start with a, with a strong European army. That was the first idea to unify Europe with, uh, with, uh, with military power. And, and the, the fundamental background was the major idea was that with unifying our, our military forces, uh, a war inside of the European Union would be uh, uh, impossible if you unify uh, the forces, uh, the armies in Europe. Uh, so again, I think to invest in a, in a in an European pillar on defense and to uh, strengthen our external affairs issues and capacity to, to deal with them, uh, is, is the future. And if you ask me in 2030, we will not be the United States of Europe like we have it today, the United States of America, because we are different. We, we like our, our, our diversity in Europe. We like to, to, be, to be so colorful. And that makes me proud to be an European, because when you go to Italy, it's totally different than in Ireland or in Poland or in Germany. And, and, and that makes us so strong that we are, have so much different ways to to deal with problems, to deal with issues and so on. So we will not do copy and paste. We will go our European way, but in issues where today's world is digitalization, globalization, uh, uh, environmental issues like CO2 are demanding, are asking us to be strong, united together. And we show and we see that we only can uh, be strong together. There we should uh, unify our forces and our strengths. And then we are strong. And if you allow me, that it sounds sometimes very theoretical. I, I tell you again a very concrete example. We decided a few uh, years ago on the data protection rules for the European Union, and and I met and I met the boss of uh, of uh, Facebook uh, uh, beginning of this year in Munich in the Munich Security Conference in a bilateral talk, and uh, he told me that they are they want to have full access to the European market. So for more than uh, 400 million consumers uh, in the European market. That's why they respect on Facebook the European data protection rules. And to make it for them easier, they were using the European data protection rules also for the global business model. So we as Europeans, we are setting global standards in this digital world and positive ones because data protection is an issue we believe in. The Chinese don't believe in this. Uh, the Americans are not so clear on this, but we believe in this as Europeans. And that gives you an example that we can, uh, we can influence the decision-making process on global level, but only if we bring the full potential of the single market and the European Union together uh, on the table. Somebody else wants to know what's your first uh, memory of uh, about Europe or of Europe, a uh, personal memory? 
<laughs> well, um, I grew up in Bavaria, and, and uh, my, ex my first experience was when I was 17 years old, and I traveled with Interrail, so with, uh, with by train uh, 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 all around Europe. Uh, my first destination, my first uh, direction was to London and to Great Britain. Uh, that's why I'm so sorry about Brexit, but uh, I, I, was, I, was, I was traveling to the London and to Great Britain, and I, was in, I have in mind that uh, that I was in a, in a pub and had a Guinness in my hand and I spoke with an, an old Englishman and, uh, and, uh, and we spoke about the Second World War. I, as a 17 years old German, with an old man from Great Britain, so uh, it was a fascinating experience for me and I, and I understood that Europe has a lot to do with history, has a lot to do with our responsibility, especially we as Germans with our responsibility. And, uh, and on the other hand, uh, we share so much, so much today. Uh, so when he spoke about why he was fighting against the Nazis, then then he spoke about values I believed in, I believe in today. So that's why we have so much in common. Uh, so this was my first experience. Another question, who's your favorite politician? They don't specify whether that person should be dead or alive. So I'm going to make it more difficult for you. Your favorite politician who is alive? Oh God, oh God. <laughs> that is a very difficult, really difficult question. Uh, I tell you, for me, I, I don't have one person where I, which I admire totally or something like this. That is not the case because we are all human beings. We have positive sides, we have negative sides. That is my experience in politics. But I respect all, of, all, all the politicians, all the people who, who really fight for their, for their convictions for what, what they believe in. And there are people like Schumann, Adenauer, uh, De Gasperi from Italy, uh, also Mitterrand and Helmut Kohl, who managed the Euro. Uh, and then finally, Zeus, who managed the, the most important event in the last uh, 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 decades of Europe, that was the reunification, when people fought against the communists, uh, like, uh, like uh, Lech Walesa in Poland, uh, or, 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 or others in, in, in the east of, of, of Europe. So um, I re really respect those who are courageous enough to stand up. I uh, don't know what happened, but uh, stand up for, for what they believe in. And that is, uh, that is the fundament uh, of the European Union of today, that we had such people. And that is what I really admire. One final question, and it's from uh, your colleague, Eva Maydell, MEP. Oh, Eva, good to see you. Hiya. She wants to know, what is your favorite European country apart from your own? <laughs> Eva, you know that I cannot answer this as an, as an EPP group leader. Uh, and, and, and really, I, I, like, I, like, uh, I like to be in European. Uh, and uh, when I'm, for example, ever in, uh, in, in, in Bulgaria, it's great to be there. It's great to, to see the people there. Uh, and, uh, and, and it's the same way in Ireland. So the colorful side of the European Union uh, is is a, is a beautiful thing in Europe, and and let's keep it. So don't make Europe uh, or, uh, as a, as a, as a, as a, as an institution which makes everything the same. That's not Europe. Europe is so colourful, and I like this colourful Europe. That was a very diplomatic uh, <coughs> answer from you, uh, Manfred. Um, we're going to leave it there. We've covered plenty of topics uh, today, so we appreciate you taking the time on Europe Day uh, to speak to us on Facebook uh, Live this morning. So enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, thanks again, and thanks to everyone for watching. Thank you. Bye-bye.